What's up traders, Matt from the Trade Brigade here with your weekend crypto report where as always I do a technical analysis and give you my thoughts on the coins listed up above. We still have Ape USD hanging out at the bottom of our list and we've added Zcash by popular demand. I also just think the chart looks phenomenal there. It's very respectfully moving in a solid channel to the upside so I thought it's worth sharing. Anyways, kicking things off on the Bitcoin daily time frame as we always do some important developments over the course of the last week or so, we did happen to break the top end of this overall range right here and you'll notice that we're getting the break and retest phenomenon as we speak currently trying to print a hammer candle on today's session that is a fairly bullish indication to me especially noting that we've seen a nice move to the upside a little bit of a reasonable pullback respecting this technical level around 45,800 strikes me as being a positive development in the bitcoin chart to the bull side if we can get some follow through if this holds here on that 45.8 we're just looking for follow through to the upside next daily structure comes into place around $51,500 per coin. After that, our next major resistance, if I scrunch up the chart, prior support turned resistance right here, around $58,500 per coin. So those are upside targets. And over the course of time, if we do get this range, because it is a range and it is breaking out, if we do have that double based on a quick eyeball test, again, that's where your $58,500 target is coming from, doubling of this range, if this truly is a breakout to the upside, I'm not saying it happens over the course of one week, one month, but over time, that would be a fulfillment of the breakout from this range that we've currently been trying to resolve for the past couple of months. So with all of that being said, we are leaning on the bull side here with the hammer candle that is developing. However, keep in mind, there is still possibility that this turns into a look above and fail if we firmly get price acceptance back down underneath 45,800. So what that would mean is probably this uh, candle turning around and closing as a doji, and then maybe the next bar comes in and prints a doji down here. We get more price acceptance underneath. Maybe there's a little bit of an upper wick that tries to get back above that level. If that type of activity starts to unfold, then maybe it is a look above and fail. And I would start targeting the support trend line as well as this breakout point around $42,150 per coin. Let's just round it off and call it 42 k in Bitcoin as your first target. And note that that is the dominant support trend line as of right now coming off of these lows. If that doesn't hold, that becomes much more concerning. And the true look above and fail pattern as we know would be look above fail target is essentially the bottom end of the range it doesn't look like a likely possibility don't get me wrong everything about this chart is pointing to the bull side especially with the hammer candle that is starting to form here that lower wick indicating the buyers really stepped up as soon as this came quote unquote back on sale inside of the range and we're currently trading back to the upside again don't misconstrue what i'm saying as being bearish the chart is currently in control of the bulls i'm just talking about scenarios where if we do happen to get acceptance underneath 45,800 that that's what I would watch out for to the downside. Let's continue along and talk about Ethereum here. What's going on on the ETH chart? Same exact kind of thing is applying. You can see that this was the range essentially. You could even draw it in as something like this. Nonetheless, getting a break, retest, and hold. This one's currently sitting right at the pressure cooker top of this most recent bull flag. So I hope the video comes out in time for you guys to catch this potential breakout point right here. But nonetheless, if we can clear roughly, let's call it 3465, 3475, if we can clear this area, there's some room to run overhead basically doubling of this little consolidation takes us to the next daily target around 36.58 and then the next major target is 4,000 okay 4,000 is really the number based on all of this prior support some congestion around it and the other number that 30 uh, 36 58 that we just mentioned is coming from here, right? That's where the stronger breakdown really came from, which kicked off this most recent, uh, I don't want to call it a bear market, but downturn across the crypto market, right? So those are the significance of those upside targets. And again, the chart does look fantastic, giving us some consolidation above the prior range from right around in here. So that strikes me as bullish price acceptance higher. The buy, uh, buyers responded on the retest here. Again, everything checks out as being in the bull camp. If it does turn into a look above and fail, my first target would be the breakout point from here around 2984. Uh, but again, that does not look like the primary objective as we head into the weekend and upcoming week here inside of Ethereum. From the grand scheme of things, if you're just like a long-term crypto bull, essentially what you want to see happen is, you know, anything that's above the support trend line over the course of time, that's fine, right? Again, I don't think that this is going to be in play, but if there is a nasty downturn and you just want to remain bullish on Ethereum, make sure that support trend line holds over the course of the long time frame. okay? So that's what we've got in Ethereum. Binance coin up next. Again, many of 
these charts look very similar with break and retests almost everywhere out there. Getting a little bit of a break. This one's chopping through the range, but nonetheless, I would look at this as a positive development inside of Binance Coin. Excuse me. We know that it's been lagging behind. Kind of, you know, it, it spent much more time in the midpoint of the range in here. Nonetheless, this activity strikes me as positive. Again, a little bit of a dip back in, trying to get bought back up from the uh, buyers, essentially. If we can get more firm price acceptance over these recent highs, 450 roughly, uh, it's kind of right where we're trading at now. Look at the range. This is much more tradable as opposed to what we just saw in something like Ethereum, for example. So this is definitely something on my radar for short-term scalps to the upside, noting that you've got about a 50-point range to the upside if this wants to break out of this most recent little bull flag that it's been trying to put in, if this is firmly going to be moving outside of this range here. Again, this is a much better range to be trading for than what we just saw in Ethereum, which is slightly more compressed. So Binance Coin, definitely keep it on your radar. You want to make sure that it gets the break up and over 450 to the downside. Ensure that your support trend line holds. If it does, fantastic. We're continuing to put in higher lows. I would look for something like that. If it breaks, that's where I start to get a little bit more concerned. I would want to see this 393 level as a line in the sand into the upcoming week to remain bullish if we get a deeper pullback than what we're expecting. Again, the chart wouldn't really suggest that, but that's my level to the downside. Cardano is up next, ADA. Nice, healthy bull flag consolidation. I mean, look at this thing, putting in beautiful high and tight consolidation. Again, this rip kind of came out of nowhere, but nonetheless, this is potentially providing us a little bit of opportunity. The reason I say that is a lot of people can probably see this move that happened in Cardano from about 80 cents up to 120, a 40 cent move inside of something that was sub one at the time. That's significant, right? That's a big, big move in terms of percentage gain. Anyone who feels like they're getting left behind, fear of missing out, FOMO essentially, right? If we see this bull flag start to resolve to the upside, I think anyone who missed the first run in Cardano is going to try to catch the second one, which is added buying pressure. And notice that our next range is from here all the way up to here, another 40 point range, or excuse me, 40 cent range, I should say, uh, but 40 cent range inside of Cardano. That's definitely something worth trading for. And I'm starting to also see this as a potential cup and handle, right? Any pullbacks that essentially hold a dollar or consolidate above a dollar, fantastic. I think that's a positive development in the chart and could be the start of a larger turnaround inside of the coin. So definitely watching this one as well, just like Binance coin uh, to see if they can quote unquote come back from the dead, right? Let's continue along. Uh, and by the way, if we break a dollar, it's not, it's not as attractive, obviously, anymore. And 80 cents seriously is the line in the sand. Anything under that, very concerning inside of Cardano. Uh, again, nothing about the chart would suggest that. Let's actually take out the Fibonacci's just to sort of double check on where our 38.2 is. Yeah, look at this. Completely healthy consolidation from a Fibonacci perspective on this most recent bull flag to the upside. So that's what we've got there. Continuing along now to Solana, this one breaking out strong to the upside. Notice that there hasn't really been consolidation or pullback yet. If this does want to follow suit with the break and retest, like we've seen among many of those other coins so far, the retest level is essentially 118, right? Something that does this gives us a break, retest, and then boom, there's kind of the follow through to the upside. So if a pullback does occur, and again, based on the current structure that we're seeing, uh, you know, the candles that are printing doesn't look likely whatsoever. We're trading up at the highs. You know, there's the, you know, this, uh, excuse me, this inverted hammer got completely gobbled up by the green candle, correct? Nothing about this would indicate, hey, a stronger seller exists out there in Solana and we should look for a complete pullback. It, again, it doesn't look likely, but if we do get a pullback, 118 is the level to watch. If we come down and start printing a hammer candle, something with a long lower wick, it's going to look very similar to your Binance, your Ethereum, your Bitcoin, right? We've seen that break and retest. If that happens, you're going to know, okay, we want to see this hold. And if it does, it gives us a hammer candle long up and over the high, at least for an equal high, if not higher. And our next target inside of Solana is going to be right around in here, right? You can clearly see how that gave us a lower high from here to here. So that would be the target around 153, 150 psychological on a retest and go something like that. If this does just want to continue to the upside, I would say that risk reward is not really favorable at this point in time. The time to get in was down here as we were breaking this range. The time to get in uh, was potentially here on the little bit of an inverted hammer. And then as soon as it sort of held there, maybe that was a long entry as well, but chasing it up here at the highs, I'm not really seeing where you would put a stop loss at this point in time. So I would really be mindful of waiting for a pullback if you're trying to play the long in Solana, okay? Downside levels, if we cannot hold 118, and this level, by the way, was just smashed. Uh, you know, we obviously just, you know, made that move right through it. So 129, not as strong uh, anymore. We're gonna remove that. It's really gonna come back down to uh, 118, I believe, if the pullback is gonna happen in the first place. But if that doesn't hold, what I'm getting at next level underneath is certainly this one around here, $100 even, right? Support trend line is very steep at this point in time. I would not try to follow this as something that needs to hold, but if you wanna have it on your chart, I 
wouldn't fault you for that. Next up, we have Link. What's going on in Link? Uh, hasn't quite broken out yet. So a little bit of relative weakness. However, if it needs to quote unquote catch up to the rest of the crypto market, this is something to watch right here. If we can get a break of this consolidation to the upside, first target bump in the road here around 20 even. Let's go ahead and put that level on. Just shy, apologies, 1960. But anyways, consolidation, if this breaks, there's your first target. And then look left, very, very emotional structure on the way down. The next real level is 2380 coming from, if I scrunch up the chart, prior support. I mean, look at all the support in here, kind of magnetized around it, chopped through it there. Support, support, resistance, resistance. You get the gist, right? 23 is the next level if this gets an upside swing and starts to quote unquote catch up with the remainder of the crypto marketplace. If it can't break out and it pulls back, you do want to see it hold this level right here, mainly because it's this double bottom neckline around 1525, right? So anything that does this, fine, not the end of the world. As long as we hold that level, I would remain in the bull camp here inside of Chainlink. Anything that can't really Really hold 15, I would just look for continued chop inside of this area, right? Something that does this, the ping pong trade goes on. Next up, we have polka dot. What's going on in the dot? Pulling back beautifully, hammer candle happening at the support trend line at prior resistance. I love the pullback. Nice, healthy uh, reversal of trend here. It looks like we're starting to hold daily pressure cooker top up here at prior resistance, at prior support around 2335. If we can make the move up there, I would look for this to break this time around, noting that we do have a higher low pullback. So something that does this, boom, look left. Again, ultimately you're looking for 30. There could be a bump in the road here though. So let's throw that on the chart together. That level is going to be roughly 28 even, but even still, I mean, that's a fantastic range to be trading for about five points here on a sub $30 coin. Definitely worth watching to the upside. Ideally, this does not break the support trend line, but it's not really the end of the world until we break the double bottom neckline, which is right here around 1975. So my line in the sand here, if it cracks back down underneath, in my estimation, we might be in store for just more ping pong, just like we talked about in Link a second ago, okay? So those are my levels, 1977 line in the sand into the upcoming week and weekend. What do we have in crypto.com coin? Beautiful bull flag. However, uh, you still kind of have the phenomenon of lower highs in place here. Don't get me wrong. We do have the double bottom break of the neckline retest here. So it does look healthy, but I would be patient for longs on this one until we can start to crack this level around 50 cents roughly. If that happens, next target overhead is coming from here. Let's go ahead and throw that on the chart together. What are we looking for? Roughly 58, so an 8 cent range here on something that's, you know, sub 50 as of right now, maybe it's worth watching. Uh, but overall, just to remain bullish on this in the long term, we know we want to stay above that support trend line. And so far we are doing so. Uh, that would be my line in the sand for the upcoming week, right? Essentially, as long as we're above the support trend line, fine, the trend reversal back to the upside is still underway inside of crypto.com coin, but we do want to see it start making a new higher high. That way we can break the lower high sort of phenomenon that's going on here. So watch for the 50 cent break. We talked about upside target line in the sand, support trend line. We've hit this one home. Let's continue along. Matic, what's going on in Matic? Uh, we did take out technically the double bottom neckline, uh, but it's kind of sloppy, right? So break retest, ultimately pressure cooker top on the daily is if we can clear the prior couple of days highs. Um, you know, this one's getting a little... There's a lot of levels in this congestion area right here. I, I really do like this because it's the neckline. I think it's worth keeping, but notice how the lower wick almost comes into this level as well. So as long as we can do something like this and stay in this range, I wouldn't be bearish, but I would only be bullish on this one if we can crack the highs. Like I wouldn't really be thinking about uh, consolidation as necessarily the best type of setup. I would want to see it crack the high and then either give us a retest and then go, or you know, I, I want to see some sort of confirmation is what I'm getting at with Matic before I start leaning on the bull side in this particular chart, just noting all of the sort of chop that's been going on in here, the fact that this didn't really hold to the T, but we respected this one. We have a pressure cooker top. You know, my thoughts are a little bit more neutral. There are some better long setups that we've certainly seen in today's lineup other than Matic. So if you're going to watch Matic, make sure it's a little bit lower on your list so far. And you really do want to see the confirmation break of 173 before deciding to get overly long inside of this coin. Uh, to the downside, as we pointed out, my line in the sand has to be here around 153. Anything underneath strikes me as just, you know, we're in the midpoint of this range. We're chopping around. It's not clear, right? If we come back down here, maybe there's opportunity uh, for some sort of bounce off the bottom end of the range. But as of right now, a little bit more neutral inside of Matic. Continuing along, Luna. What's going on in Luna? Great chart. I mean, fantastic chart. This bull pennant right here, playing out to the upside. Fantastic break and retest of the all-time high, essentially. I believe it's all-time high. Yeah, all-time high inside of Luna, break and retest, giving us that hammer candle on today's session. If we take out the highs, monitor for continuation into blue skies. I mean, it's as simple as that. Beautiful move here. Uh, it's been very respectful, right? You can see it's nicely put in 
easy, easy to track, higher lows. We had this breakout point. We had the all-time high to contend with. Now we're getting price acceptance above. That strikes me as being very bullish inside of Luna. I would continue to monitor this one for blue skies. My first line in the sand is, well, now ideally that we are getting price acceptance above the all-time high. I don't want to see it back down underneath 103. If it does happen, it's not technically the end of the world. We do want to see this hold up though, right? The breakout point really around 94 doesn't want to be violated again. Uh, if that does happen, it's a break of the short-term support trend line. So this one right here. So let's say over the course of time, it does something like this and then breaks. Again, that's not really too promising. We're getting back down into this choppy zone. Well, not really choppy, but consolidation zone right here. It's just not as bullish of a development for the chart itself. So ideally, we remain above 95-ish level here inside of Luna to remain optimally bullish. Looking for just continuation into blue sky territories, play whole dollars, uh, $5 marks, $10 marks, $25 marks. Those nice round numbers that could offer psychological resistance will be your targets overhead. To the downside, if the primary support trend line breaks, I know we violated it here, but because the recap was so sharp. I do want it still on the chart. If that breaks, then overall, this sort of trend right here is coming to a bit of an end. Uh, you know, I would just look for the bottom end of the consolidation flag, right? 75, 77-ish area inside of Luna. Again, nothing about the chart currently would, su would suggest that, but those are my downside levels. Continuing along, Mana. What do we have going on in the metaverse plays? A little bit more neutral. Again, we did not get the break of this overall range right here. We are printing a hammer candle off of this prior area of resistance, so I like that. However, uh, again, just not quite as bullish as the rest of the charts. If we do get a break, you do want to see that break and retest type phenomenon going on above 283. Next target is the double top from in here around 350 roughly to the downside if this just wants to remain in range if it can't get into gear up and over there again you're just playing ping pong in the overall range look for more two sided trade back and forth activity if that's not your gig if that's not what you like trading just avoid it right there are plenty of other decent setups out there that we've talked about so far ultimately can't be uh, can't be underneath 225 inside of mana all right next up we have ape we're gonna have to drill down to a smaller time frame just to see what's going on we'll go to the 15 minute. Uh, and well, actually, let's start from the daily. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Take it easy, Matt. Like, you know, one step at a time here uh, from the daily, right? Obviously, big push to the upside on the release of the coin, getting consolidation up towards the highs. That has to be slightly more bullish than bearish, right? If it was more bearish, it would have immediately collapsed back down like 99% of the crappy coins out there and done something like this. It's not the case. There's still possibility that that could happen. But as of right now, it is holding up closer to the highs, obviously, than dribbling back down towards the lows. So daily time frame, check a little bit more bullish consolidation. Next up, we have the 15 minute time frame. What do we see here? Is there momentum in the in the coin? Yes, it is starting to come back. What I think is interesting about this is the fact that it's kind of been range bound, right? You can see how we're just going back and forth in here. There's opportunity at bottoms of ranges and there's opportunity at tops of ranges. Currently, the fact that we've held the bottom end, we see this momentum push to the upside. We're getting a reasonable pullback. It's not an all out collapse, just a reasonable pullback. Let's check in with the Fibonacci's actually just to see what that's like. From the lows up to the highs, nice respectful 38.2 pullback. If we can turn back around, if we can turn this into a short-term double bottom, look for the top of the flag and then higher after that. Again, we're at the bottom end of like, I don't know, it's probably easier to see on maybe like a one hour time frame. If you go to a one hour chart, you see we're at the bottom of this range, right? So are we gonna get follow through to the top end is ultimately the question. And I do think it could come from this bull flag breakout if it wants to give us a healthy hold of that 38.2. So that's what I'm thinking about inside of ApeCoin. It is still worth watching, uh, but if momentum kind of dries up, if it continues to go sideways, I'll only bring it up uh, up in another video uh, if there's a big sort of push one way or another, and it's worth mentioning. But as of right now, uh, it's kind of neutralizing right in this overall range. So we'll see what happens in the short term with uh, what we've just outlined essentially. Last but not least, Zcoin, Zcash. What's going on in Zcash? We're on an hourly. Let's go to a daily. Uh, what I want to point out here. This one broke out much sooner than a majority of our other coins, right? So I had this ascending triangle, higher low, higher low, uh, equal highs, break, retest. Okay, fantastic. What happens next? You have this prior resistance, break, consolidation, retest. What's going on now? Are we going to break this level and come up for that high in here? Maybe. 300 is the target way up above. You can see it is supporting at the support trend line respectfully a number of times. We had super support here for the most recent interaction. I like the trend that's unfolding here. The upward channel is very respectful. It's give and take. It's not all one-sided trade. It's not a parabolic move to the upside it looks like healthy trend as of right now. So I'm not saying it has to continue. Uh, usually once you've identified things and it's worked, I don't know, three plus times, you run the risk of it starting to not work in the future, okay? So 
keeping an eye on it. I like the trend that's unfolding here. I do want to see it, you know, get a break and retest once again and continue this trend. However, if it just wants to go sideways, if it breaks this support trend line sideways through time, it's not the end of the world. I'm just going to look at it in this context as a big bull flag. And then maybe the break of 212 over time, look left, pretty thin structure up here, maybe something right here. Let's go ahead and mark that off just so we have it. It's going to be around 250 psychological number. That makes sense. First targets here and then 300 coming from this clear pivot high. Okay. So that's from the bull flag that would look something like this. If it wants to break down underneath this level, underneath the support trend line, not as interested into the future. Uh, we'll see what happens essentially, how it unfolds, how the breakdown happens. Is it strong selling? Is it just a little bit of a dribble lower and then recaptured? We'll see one step at a time, but I did want to show you guys this chart. So that's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it or learned anything new, let me know in the comment section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget our secondary channel is linked down below in the description. And with all of that being said, I wish you a green trading weekend.